This book is about winging it by Emma Isaacs and what it really meant for me is make a start, make progress, take steps, irrelevant of uh, size, even if it's a pinky toe ahead, forward is forward. Good morning and welcome back to Rouge Oriental. I'm Jessica and here on this channel I share my mind, body and business experiences so that you can take away what resonates and lead by example. So today I'm going to share with you a book review on Winging It by Emma Isaacs. Now, excuse all my notes. So I picked up this book when I was battling with my mind about whether to get started on YouTube, you know, the hows and whens and all of that, and also whether bus theory was going to move ahead and what the flipping fruit loop I was going to do with myself in terms of as a career or as a life path. This book was actually the last book I picked up in the bookstore on my way out. But after reading it briefly, this book really spoke to me. I was already arguing in my mind about getting started and sentences like, that path ultimately starts with you, or no one else can take that first step for you. And those sorts of sentences really grabbed me. and. Although I've heard them many times in different ways by different people, um, this book, well, those sentences in this book really hit home for me. So why did this book really resonate for me? And I like to think of myself as always being prepared enough to wing it. And most of the time I'm winging it because that's how life goes and I'm always prepared to face the fact that Things don't always go according to plan. And so with that in mind, I'm always ready to adapt and flex. And both of those basically mean I'm winging it, right? Because how can you be prepared for the unexpected? So when I read, quote, no one really knows what they're doing and we're all just winging it. It was like, boom, like, thank you for confirming this and making it real, like these thought processes are real. The other thing is that her setbacks and failures really helped me face that fear of failure, um, fear of not doing well or not going anywhere. I began to be more comfortable with making mistakes and looking at mistakes as a lesson, as an opportunity to do better, get it right the next time. Um, but ultimately the mistake was me putting one foot in front of the other. So mistakes meant to me that I was actually taking the next step towards my goal. When she wrote on page 68, you don't have to finish everything you start. So that was another thing that really resonated for me. This again pulled in the previous idea of mistakes um, and it put it into another perspective. I was always thinking that committing to something means to go all the way. But with her line or her idea in my mind, I was like, yeah, I can stop here and change course. You know, just because I've come so far doesn't mean that, that I have to keep going on knowing how miserable and sad and regretful I will be if I continue down that path. And I always tell myself, you know, there will be signs along the way, you know, perhaps maybe again, all these mistakes or failures that, you know, mistakes or failures are signs that this is not the right path or not the right way or not in alignment. So you want mistakes. You want to make these errors because something is meant to come from it. You know, maybe you're getting roadblocks everywhere because you're not meant to be here or there. Another thing I love about this book is I love the real life example she provides of herself, and her many contacts or relationships or her close relationships. There are a combination of quotes and stories, examples. So you really get taken inside the minds and lives of people who have made it. During the time I was actually reading this book, I was growing spiritually. So there were a lot of examples and explanations that I was able to connect or apply my spiritual learning or journey to the experience or to the advice. For example, on page 11, she goes, when you wing it, you learn how to trust yourself. And again, at that time, I was working on the, you know, the whole concept of trust 
and there were reiterations of guidance and surrendering and just trusting the universe. Then there were other bits and quotes here and there that confirmed that I wasn't Fruit Lupin. Um, as it, it made me realize that the way I've been thinking, you know, there are people out there that think like this too. Um, so for example, on page 13, Brian Chesky, co-founder of Airbnb, once said, live and think like a child. Oh, and there were more, was more to it. But, you know, I've been convincing myself to think like a child for a long time just to motivate myself to make a start. Because, you know, like children, they don't think about all these different things that we as adults think. They just, if they want to do something, they just make a start. And at that point in time in my life, I needed that motivation. And to read that somebody thinks like that or read to somebody that would give that sort of advice is like just really good to connect with. So to add more love to this book, um, there are a lot of like practical lists of questions or actions or advice in the book that like I could really use again. On page 12 is all, you know a list of what winging it sort of means. Winging it means saying yes and working it out later. Winging it means less second guessing yourself and more going with your gut. You know and again like when I was applying my spiritual um, learnings to it, I was like, you know, your gut feeling is really your intuition, right? Winging it means more time for going with the flow and celebrating the unexpected. So again, although like a lot of this you could probably find in a lot of different books, but it was just the way that it was written and explained and the way that it was just put together and maybe perhaps it was Emma herself, that I was able to really connect with the words and experiences. Now I'm just going to stop you here and ask for a quick favour or hopefully genuinely you want to. But if you are finding this video helpful, I would love if you could just give it a thumbs up. And if you think that this sort of content is going to resonate with you and benefit you in the future, please click the subscribe button and the bell and then you will get notified when I post new videos or content. So let's keep going. So I categorise my main takeaways into like three sections. The first section being mindset, so um, how to lead your mind. Um, she really gets to the point and addresses those mindset battles and provides solutions in a way that really resonated with me. There were like practical checklists or activities that you could implement straight away, you know, question examples that you can use to find or lead your passion. The third section is what I would called leading a business um, but for me I will come back to that section when I am at a company stage or where I have a team of people not just myself <laughs> but I read it anyway but yeah most of my markings or value I gained um, in the sections are in the first half of the book. So what did this book do for me? I think I broke down a lot of barriers and a lot of those barriers had to do with perfection you know, being the perfect image to your family and your friends or, or, you know, just trying to make people, you know, be proud of you, I guess. And as Breen says on page 86, courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. And this again is something I really needed to hear at the time and I sort of still need to hear it. Yeah, so with that in mind now, I've taken away from the book and now I have made a start on social media and on Instagram and on YouTube and TikTok and that sort of stuff. So look, honestly, if you're a mum who's feeling stuck in life or in purpose or you're stuck in your decisions or not knowing when to start on your passion, this book could really help. It's really motivating, it's real, it's practical and inspiring. So Emma is a mum herself and so her mum experiences and thought processes are like inserted throughout the book and it's just good to know that being a mum doesn't mean the end of our passion or purpose, you know, a purpose other than keeping our kids alive and happy. <laughs> All right, time to go now. So have a great morning, lovelies. Show up to your mornings bright and strong. 
um, because this morning we get another chance to better yesterday, whether that's a better smile, we laugh better, enjoy our coffee better, you know, you get it. <laughs> you know, I would really appreciate if you found this video helpful to give it a thumbs up and also if you think my channel will be beneficial or entertaining to your leadership live in the near future, please click the subscribe button and the bell so that you'll get notified when I post new content. And so again, till next time,